Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now Windows XP was launched 15 years ago back in 2001 and quickly became very popular with over 1 billion copies sold to date. In fact it's still the fourth most popular Windows OS and it's no surprise with the incredibly user friendly interface and reliability many regular consumers and businesses alike are still reluctant to give it up even after its official support stopped in 2014. I know for a fact that despite the lack of security updates and patches, a few of you guys watching will still be using XP too. And today, we're going to be taking a look back at this iconic OS, and more specifically, how games run when compared to a new operating system that, on paper, should do a better job of allocating and managing resources thus providing a better overall experience. Now XP only supported up to DX9, and so you are rather limited in terms of playing your favourite games, which doesn't give us the best of starts. Newer titles like GTA 5 or Battlefield 1, for example, won't start along with many others, and so we'll be checking out the stuff that will run and seeing whether or not there's any difference between XP and 10, the newest Microsoft offering, despite the obvious downsides that we've already discussed. Because let's face it, you may want a secondary machine for those older titles and with XP only costing around $20 new, it sounds tempting, but don't go out and buy a copy of Windows XP just yet. Now for today's video, we are using our i5-650 with an Intel DQ57TM motherboard and as we've got on the 64-bit version of XP that supports up to 128GB of RAM, we can use our usual 8GB of DDR3. Now, we couldn't use our G3258 in this case as the motherboard associated with it, the H81M P33, has no drivers for the older operating system. The 750Ti does work, however, and initially we had some issues, but a quick uninstall and reinstallation of the 368.81 drivers released in July of this year seemed to fix any issues. We also made sure that we were using the same drivers when we conducted our comparative Windows 10 tests too. So let's jump into some games. First up we have Far Cry 3. We averaged about 76 FPS over our gameplay period and experienced little or no lag spikes or freezing that I had read about beforehand. You may see a few slight frame drops here and there but nothing off-putting. When we compare it to our Windows 10 result, which will be displayed now, you can see that XP outperformed 10 by about 4 frames per second on average. A good start for this legacy OS. Skyrim next, another great game compatible with XP. We selected the Ultra Preset option here and managed to get a smooth 55 frames per second on average. I will say though that we experienced some flickering textures that you may be able to pick up on the mountains in the background there, along with a few hiccups during our test that we didn't see when we were using Windows 10. Our average overall scores here and Windows 10 provided about 7 to 8 frames extra. Now, GTA 4, perhaps the most notoriously unoptimized game of all time, and this ran at 45 frames per second on XP with everything on high. This dropped to the low 30s sometimes, but it mainly stayed in the 40s, and the same goes for Windows 10 as well. In fact, we achieved 5 frames less on average with Windows 10, and we experienced more frame drops too. Safe to say, if you're looking to get your feel of GTA 4, and you've got a capable XP system lying around, then have at it. Finally, Fallout 3. 80 was the average here on Ultra, with XP rounding off our tests with another great result. Windows 10 again yielded a worse result with 74 frames per second, but the game dropped to the mid-60s during combat on both. Overall, the results were quite interesting. On some occasions, XP performed better according to the average frame rates, but with the difference so small, it could be purely coincidental, or it may just be that DirectX 9 works better on XP, as it is the operating system it was designed for. Now, obviously, as I've mentioned, modern games are unplayable simply due to this DirectX limitation, and so to be honest, I can't recommend installing Windows XP at all anymore. Furthermore, the lack of official support means that just browsing the web is more akin to Minesweeper than the actual game itself. 
To be honest though, if you're still using XP, then you know of its gaming limitations. But it's nice to see that you're not missing out on a better gaming experience if older titles are more your thing or you're stuck with an XP machine for whatever reason. There's one thing I haven't mentioned, something that defined the XP gaming experience. So there we have it guys. <laughs> Thank you for watching this video. Thank you for taking a look back at Windows XP with me today. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, leave a like down below. Leave a dislike if you didn't enjoy it so much. I know it's something a little bit different than usual. We usually cover older hardware, but in this case we were covering older software. And I hope you guys liked it nonetheless. Um, also, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, be sure to click that subscribe button down below. And again, thank you all for watching. Thank you for 40,000 subscribers, which is insane. And hopefully I'll see all of you in the next one.